How do you expect that changes Israel's go forward plan as we're still awaiting their response to an attempt, uh, an attempted strike on Israel with hundreds of missiles launched that happened now almost three weeks ago? Sure. Well, I'm not surprised at the fact that uh, Israel's response was not immediate. I think there are a variety of factors at play, including trying to maximize how much you can catch the enemy, in this case Iran, off guard in one way or another. Uh, so it seems that uh, this may contribute to a longer period of time, this leak. Uh, the administration's clearly acknowledging that it happened, uh, which also makes me think that there may be some effort to ensure that whatever happens is sufficiently different than whatever information was leaked. We should note the two documents uh, had been prepared by the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency and it are essentially interpretations of satellite imagery. We're, we're actually watching where troops are being moved, where missile batteries are being moved. In the bigger picture here, we've already heard reporting that Israel will not target oil installations, will not target uh, Iran's nuclear uh, systems. Isn't the cat out of the bag already on what Israel is doing? How much does this change? Uh, hard, hard to know. It's not good for any information to be out in public that is, this is highly, highly secret and compartmentalized mm -hmm. uh, information, the work that the National Geospatial Agency does, period, mm -hmm. is. Uh, and uh, the methods that Israel uses, who they're going after, in which ways, I think CAD is not out of the bag on that at all. Mm -hmm. I think it's still, you know, quite unclear. We just know things they're not going to do. We don't know what they are going to do. Mm -hmm. And we still don't know for sure timing. And I wonder how timing is influenced by the fact that Antony Blinken right now is on a plane yeah. back to the region for the 11th time since October 7th of last year. What role does he play, not just in potentially the determination Israel is making, but also in how this conflict in the region moves forward when he's walked away empty handed many times before? Well, what I would say is Anthony Blinken has perhaps walked away without getting everything the United States wants or without getting the kinds of public statements or movement. I wouldn't characterize that as empty-handed, though, mm -hmm. because I think we, we can't see what things his conversations have prevented, what has taken different routes. Uh, we only see the actions, which in some cases are not actions that the United States wished for. Uh, so I think his repeated visits there, his conversations that are probably... Um, tough in a way that you can have conversations in private that you can't have in public are important, are ways to make gains, and, uh, and the United States has made clear it wants to seize the opportunity that it sees from the killing of Yahya Sinwar um, and moving toward getting that ceasefire in Gaza as a way to get hostages out, get humanitarian aid into so many innocent Palestinians, and at the same time also have steps forward that can de-escalate the risks in the rest of the region. Of course, the, the conventional wisdom in Washington right now is nothing happens until after the election because the Netanyahu government doesn't know whom it would be dealing with. Do you see that being true? Not only that, but the leader of Hamas was just killed last week, and no one is speaking for that group either. So. I'm not sure the silence from Hamas means that they don't already have a leadership succession plan in place. Uh, Yahya Sinwar, uh, evil as he was, was also a brilliant strategist. Uh, those two are not uh, necessarily in contradiction. Sure. And, uh, and I believe he left likely plans uh, for succession there. Um, I think there are any of number of things that can happen between now and the election, things for the better and things for the worse. Um, and for Prime Minister Netanyahu, he may be eager to see who prevails uh, here in the United States, but he also is trying to maintain his own political position, and that is affected by actions he takes or doesn't take uh, in his own country. Well, it strikes me that we're considering here Israel's fight with Hamas, yes, but still an active front in the north and the border with Lebanon as well. Do you see it as likely in your mind that in, in after the death of Sinwar, a ceasefire in Gaza could be agreed to while there is still an ongoing fight with Hezbollah? Or do all of these things need to happen simultaneously if they are to happen at all? I think it's unlikely that they happen simultaneously. I think they are interlinked. Mm -hmm. And for a variety of reasons, uh, it wouldn't be surprising to me that the getting to a ceasefire in Gaza is the first step that can then help to de-escalate the situation in Lebanon uh, that can work to uh, show Iran how much regional actors are together and allied 
against what they're trying to do as opposed to for. Those things require a way forward for Palestinians mm -hmm. as well. Um, and what Amos Hochstein, who's in Lebanon now, has been mm -hmm. talking about is also a return a return to enforcing, if it was ever enforced, UN Resolution 1701 back from 2006 to move Hezbollah uh, north of the Latani River and, and would also get Israel out of Lebanon. Well, arriving in Israel before the Secretary of State is this uh, advanced missile defense system, the THAAD missile defense system that we talked about last week. It's been deployed today. It, it makes you wonder, considering the push and pull that we've seen with Ukraine, for instance, have we given everything is to Israel that it has asked for? Well, the THAAD missile defense system, as I understand it, and Secretary Austin has spoken to mm -hmm. it, is there to, to ensure Israel's ability to defend itself yes. and to defend U.S. interests at the same time. Uh, and so that is consistent with both our commitment to Israel and the job the United States has to sure. maximize security and Whether stability. it's a defensive or offensive posture, though, we have checked off every punch list that Israel has given us, correct? When it comes to military hardware, when it comes to support militarily. I think that the Biden administration has maximized what it's able to do uh, with respect to Israel. Mm -hmm. um, having dealt with Israelis in the past in negotiations over things that they want or seek from the United States, I would be skeptical that they would say that they have 100% of what they want yeah. and need. 